I created the Willena line of supplements just because so many of you have been emailing us different brands asking, is that safe? Is that a good supplement? Some of them were pretty decent. Others uh, were horrifying me. And that explains why some women felt good taking supplements. Others didn't feel a difference at all. And there were also a group of women who actually started feeling worse. And this is the reason why I decided to create the Wellena line of supplements and skincare products so that it really helps you balance your hormones. My name is Magdalena Shalaki, and I'm the founder of Wellena. There's a couple of things I need you to know about supplements. The biggest thing, they're completely unregulated by the FDA. That basically means, like if I was to be dramatic, is that you and I can grind up some furniture, put it in a capsule, and call it a business. <laughs> it really is that bad. Most companies don't do that and some level of censorship and produce pretty decent quality. However, we were not interested in doing decent quality. We wanted to create something magnificent, something that really helps women heal quickly, something that's really clean and highly effective. There's a few things I need you to know about supplements that you can use as a filter for assessing your own favorite brand of supplements and I wanna share with you a couple of rules that we use that are like the golden rules, if you will, uh, for the supplement world. So my rule number one is to look at who owns the supplement company that you are currently supporting. And generally the rule is the larger the company is, uh, the more focus there is on profitability and responsibility to the shareholders rather than taking care of your health. A good example of a large company is Nestle that now owns Pure Encapsulations, Douglas Labs, and Garden of Life, and you may have heard that Nestle does not have a very good record of creating quality products. Smaller companies have a very different mandate. They are much more mission-based, um, consumer-based, uh, driven by reviews, driven by word of mouth. I really wanna encourage you to support smaller uh, businesses, family-owned businesses in the supplement world as much as you can. Rule number two is to look at certifications that a company has. My recommendation is to look at NSF as well as GMP label that you will find on the product. And that basically means that the ingredients that are coming into the manufacturing facility gets tested prior to being used. And then when the supplement is produced, it gets tested again for things like pollutants, heavy metals, yeast, bacteria, to make sure that the product you're getting is super pure. My rule number three is what is the product free of? So what you want to look at for at the label is that it is at least as free of gluten, dairy, soy, corn. Also, I highly recommend for you to look for the non-GMO label on the products. That would ensure that there is no allergens that are present in the product. Rule number four is to look for supplements that don't have cheap binders and fillers. Binders and fillers often are needed in the supplement world just because when they come out of the manufacturing facility it's, and the phone machinery, it's, it's necessary. However, the quality of those binders and fillers can vary. And so those two that you don't wanna see is things like magnesium oxide and titanium oxide. Rule number five is the price point. So for example, let's just say that you see magnesium, a bottle of magnesium costing in an average between 30 to $35. One day you see an ad that's advertising the same bottle of magnesium or similar bottle of magnesium or similar that you think it's similar for $5 and you think you scored a really great deal. I want to just warn you that that is probably either a fake product or is made with incredibly cheap ingredients and therefore I would never recommend for you to buy that. Rule number six is very revealing. It covers some of the form of ingredients that is being used in a supplement. Let me give you one that is like a, a tell-all, and that is your vitamin B12. If you have a multivitamin, if you're taking B complex, take a look at the back of the label and see what is the, the form of B12 that's used in a supplement. The form that you do want to see is in a methylated form and it's called methacobalamin. Uh, that is a form of vitamin B12 that can be used by people who have the MTHFR mutations, it's in highly absorbable, it's a high quality vitamin B12. The form that you do not want to use is called cyanocobamolin, and that is a very cheap form of vitamin B12, which unfortunately a lot of companies use, and you should not be taking that. Another dead giveaway is a form of magnesium the company is using. Magnesium oxide is one form of magnesium you should never be taking. It's got a very low bioavailability, it's a very cheap form of magnesium, but it's also one that gives a lot of GI problems as well. Instead, you should be looking for magnesium glycinate, magnesium malate, magnesium citrate. Those are all acceptable and great forms of magnesium. My last 
favorite one to look for is to see whether your multivitamin or your B-complex contains folate or folic acid. And that's a really interesting one because folate is what really occurs as a natural form of vitamin B, what that natural occurs in foods. Folic acid is a synthetic version of that vitamin. Very poor absorbability, in fact, it does more damage than good. I hope with this you can tell the difference with the Willena supplements. We spend a great amount of time and effort into sourcing the top quality ingredients that we can find, finding contract manufacturers that are the best in the country, getting all the certification that are required, making sure that we do all the testing. We never use things like magnesium oxide, and that's what makes a big difference with our Elena supplements. We have raving reviews from our community, and all of this was created to help you heal. Lastly, if you have questions, my team is always here to support you.